All right. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and get started. Um, again, I'll say one more time, because of the way my audio is set up, if you guys are talking, I can't hear you. So uh, if you want to say something, please do uh, write me a message in the chat, and I will talk to you. Um, my format, I'm going to show my sexy intro video, and then I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell and just talk about some of my projects and show you guys some pictures and videos. And then at the end, uh, I would love to do a little question and answer. So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into that chat, and I will see if I can get to them. All right. Are you guys ready for the sexy intro video? Light up the night. It'll set you free. Shine bright. Shine on. All right, so shout out to my amazing husband, Daryl, who made that wonderful intro video and also wrote the music that you heard, and he writes the music for a lot of our, uh, our stuff, so he's absolutely fantastic. Oh, Thanks so much to that. All right, so um, again, what I want to do is I just want to kind of go through some of my projects and talk about them a little bit and just show you guys some, some fun stuff. And, um, and then take some questions at the end. So if you're just getting here, my name's Erin St. Blaine, and I'm an artist and performer, and I make things that light up and sparkle and glow. Uh, I got started working with LEDs about five years ago. Um, what I've been doing up till that point was I have an entertainment company called Fire Pixie Entertainment, and we do princess parties and swimming mermaid shows and fire dancing shows in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, one of the things that I really, really wanted was a way to do more shows that weren't so difficult. Mermaid shows are very hard because you need to have a pool. Fire shows are very hard because you need to have permits. It needs to be nighttime. There's a lot of restrictions. So we were looking for some kind of show that we could do that was a little bit easier to sell and at least a little bit easier, more versatile to do for like Facebook parties and Google parties and a lot of these other shows that we've been getting hired for. So I really wanted to do a LED artwork um, so that I can make an LED show that was just about as good as our fire show. Um, the tech was not there five years ago. It was really difficult um, to find enough good DIY electronics to, and tutorials and things like that. Um, but about five years ago is when it really started taking off and um, a lot of the tech started really developing and there's so much out there now that makes it just really easy for crafters and cosplayers and people like me to be able to, uh, to make really cool art. So um, some of the, the tech that I use the most is uh, this Adafruit Circuit Playground. Um, I've been working with Adafruit for the last five years. I write tutorials on a lot of this stuff that you're going to see. Um, and most of my projects are using this little board right here. It's super cool. It has LEDs right on the face of it. It has um, sensors in it 
So it can, uh, you can make projects that are sound reactive or motion sensitive. There's a whole lot of cool stuff you can do, and it's really easy to code. Um, some of their other really cool boards is I've also got one here called a monster mask. These are like eyeballs and they have these DIY electronic eyes that show up and you can change the color and change the, the brightness and the, the focus and all this sort of thing. So I use this a lot and um, it just having so much fun with all these different boards and things that are out there. It's, it's really amazing. Now my first DIY project, my first really big LED project was Mermaid Glimmer. Um, and she is a LED swimmable mermaid tail that I can take to events and parties and things like that and swim around and it has 181 addressable LED lights in it uh, and programmed it with a whole bunch of uh, animations and things like that. And I'm going to go ahead and show some pictures of Glimmer. All right, this is her. <laughs> it is just a gorgeous tail. Um, I've had so much fun with this, and I'm kind of the only one in the world, so it's a little bit of my sort of claim to fame. Uh, this photo was taken in Mexico, and I've gotten to go on a bunch of trips with her in Mexico and the Bahamas and work with just some amazing underwater photographers to get some, some really cool images. Uh, she's running a Circuit Playground Express, just like I was saying. Um, and I just, it makes it just really easy to do a whole bunch of animations. I'll show you a couple of these. Now, um, because I am the way I am, I went a little bit overboard with the animations. And there's probably 20 or 30 different animations that she runs. Um, the different LED animations, like, are programmable. So I have taken some of the music that Daryl writes and, uh, programmed a whole show to it using uh, the different animations, the different fast LED animations that I'm using here, um, so that the animations change in time with the music, which makes it really a lot of fun to <laughs> be able to put together a whole act for more high-end shows. Now, um, when I started this, everybody told me I was just kind of crazy for even attempting it because not only was it my first large-scale LED project, but I also had to learn how to make it waterproof, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, it was hard. It was really a struggle, and I rebuilt the thing three or four or five times, and it still isn't you know, 100% working all the time. It's a lot of work. Um, but it really taught me a whole lot, and it kind of got me out there and got me recognized a little bit and uh, really kind of is why I got to start working with Adafruit um, and doing tutorials with them. And uh, last year, um, I think I had my peak mermaid glimmer experience was I got to, uh, I got flown out to Las Vegas and I got to do a performance at uh, Caesar's Palace where they shut down the whole pool and it was just me swimming around in the Caesar's Palace pool uh, in Las Vegas. So that was just a blast. Oh, and my favorite comment I've ever gotten is that Mermaid Glimmer is almost as good as Chuck E. Cheese. So I think, I think that's a win. <laughs> so once I started working with Adafruit, I got to uh, sort of develop my LED dance show idea a little bit more. This is a photo of my Persistence of Vision Poi. Um, as you can see, they're not a fire prop, but they could be a fire prop. <laughs> and uh, we were able to really take some of this technology and build a whole bunch of props and costumes and do a lot of programming and a lot of work, but come up with a show that really does rival our fire show. And we've been able to perform this all over the place. Uh, and it's, it's just been a ton of fun. I'm really hoping to, to be able to do it more. And my vision with this is I want to take it into elementary schools and bring it to kids and really start to show them that if you play with your computer, if you learn to code, if you learn to solder, if you really play with these math and technology class ideas that you're getting, then you can make something incredibly cool and fun. And this is a photo of my whole dance troupe, which is really great. Uh, I have got to costume all of them. It was just a ton of work to build all this stuff, but now I'm just really proud of, of how it came out. Um, I'll show just a couple more of my costumes, and then I'll show some of my uh, my my other artwork. This is an animatronic wasp, so Ant-Man and Wasp costume. Uh, working with Phil Burgess on this, uh, he built the mechanism that makes the wings go up and down. Uh, there's just a button on my belt that I press, and wow, <laughs> and they, they flex, and they, it's just a very cool costume. 
Uh, this is a LED ringmaster costume that I made where the whole entire hoodie animates and lights up. I actually got this hoodie from one of the vendors at Maker Faire a few years ago. And uh, just very happy to be able to take other people's artwork and add LEDs to it and make it a whole other level of excitement. This is a this is an interesting one. Uh, this cosplay is from a, a barbarian group that I'm in called the Horde, and we all bunch of a uh, bunch of us basically red and fair geeks get together and dress like barbarians and cause mayhem and sort of thing. Um, and I'm wearing sort of around my chest right now. You can see a little uh, device, which is a I call it a wayfinder. It's edge lit acrylic with um, laser cut runes cut into the acrylic, and when you press the button, the different runes light up. I have a video for this one because we had a great time making this one, so I'll show that. We had a ton of fun making this video, and I just have a ton of fun making silly projects that sort of meld the old and the new and can bring together the greatest, latest technology with something just out of a fantasy novel. It's a lot of fun. These are uh, bracers that I made based on the new Wonder Woman movie that just came out, the live-action Wonder Woman. Uh, they're really cool, too. They have uh, circuit playgrounds inside of each one. And the way they work is that the, they use the motion sensor or the sound sensor on the circuit playground so that whenever they hear a sound or whenever I block a bullet with, with them on, uh, then this really cool animation triggers. These are also edge-lit acrylic. I've got LEDs along the inside strips of each one, and then uh, the light just sort of wraps around uh, through the uh, molded acrylic. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty cool project. I photo likes to do this. Um, I've done a whole bunch of other cute little ones. This is a unicorn hat with ears that move. <laughs> and I really get into unicorns sometimes. This is a unicorn horn where it, when you touch it, the, the horn lights up and grows. It's, it's uh, glows. It's 3D printed. Um, done bunny ears and a few other just sort of fun costume projects. Medusa. She's animatronic as well. So I'll go ahead and show you the Medusa video too. <laughs> And one more animatronic one. Uh, this is Fizz Gig from the Dark Crystal movie. It's using that monster mask that I showed you earlier to animate the eyeballs. And then I have a little servo that opens his mouth and barks. <laughs> I made some LED corsets. This is a personal UV hotspot, so I'm using black light LEDs under an umbrella to illuminate 
whatever I'm wearing underneath, which I think is just a great sort of burner project. And then this is a costume I made for the uh, Labyrinth of Jareth Ball down in LA last year with a dragon headdress and uh, it was a collaboration from some other artists too that I got to work with, uh, Catherine from Blue Moon Designs on this headdress and uh, 3D printed um, sh scales on the, on the bra that I'm wearing. Um, and this is kind of what I'm going for. I went to this amazing costume ball in LA and there was maybe four of us that had light up costumes. And that is just a shame. Like <laughs> everybody needs to have light up costumes. I want to go to one of these events and just have it be completely filled with amazing light up costumes. Uh, there's just so much potential there. So. All right, the last costume I'll show just real quick is this uh, jellyfish. So this costume is made out of plastic grocery bags. It was created for a uh, fashion show where everything was based on something that needed to be recycled, recycled trash and plastic. And I went and collected grocery bags from everybody in my neighborhood and built an entire dress out of recycled grocery bags and then turned it into an animated jellyfish uh, with plastic bubble wrap, this sort of thing, um, and using a Circuit Playground Express. The idea here being uh, that jellyfish eat plastic. There's a lot of plastic bags that end up in the ocean. And then turtles, it's not jellyfish that eat the plastic, it's the turtles that eat the plastic, thinking that they are jellyfish. So my concept here was to make a, a jellyfish out of plastic and just raise awareness of how much plastic is in the ocean, and that is a big problem. All right, so um, that's most of my costumes, that sort of thing. Uh, and I'll show just a little bit about some of my more uh, non-costume projects, and then uh, answer a couple questions after that. So just a couple more, uh, couple more videos here. This is an LED floor that I made. Uh, the, there was a channel that went all the way around the floor with these glass pebbles. It just turned out really beautiful. Um, chandelier. This chandelier is made from laser cut acrylic panels and um, all the crystal gems hanging from it are uh, made of laminated cellophane. And the idea behind this one is that it is connected to the internet and it knows the weather. So when there's a rainstorm outside, it plays a rain animation on the LEDs. When there's a clouds, it plays a cloud animation, which is a lot of fun. I love making um, art that has superpowers. <laughs> This is a live edge resin uh, and walnut table, and there's uh, LEDs underneath the resin river that animate, and uh, this is kind of how it looks. This is a LED paper mache dragon. Uh, his little spines are made out of hot glue, and she's got a... Uh, an ostrich egg there in the middle, and she also runs on a Circuit Playground Express. And then this is one of my latest projects. This is my uh, tree. I built an entire tree sculpture inside my house made out of expanding foam and pool noodles. It has about a dozen fairy lights hanging from it. Um, and the fairy lights actually uh, have different LED animation modes based on the four seasons. So you can change them and have a spring, summer, or winter, or fall animation. Um, and then the tree has eyeballs as well, and I'm using that monster mask board once more. And as soon as you approach the tree, it wakes up and looks at you. And hopefully it's not too disconcerting to my guests who have to sleep in there. <laughs> a few more pictures of that. And this is my moss barometer. Uh, it has an Adafruit clue, and the clue has a barometric sensor on it. So this artwork actually knows the weather as well. It knows what the barometric pressure is and it will show different colors based on whether the pressure is rising or falling in the area. So it tells me if it's gonna rain. So here's just a quick page showing some of my tutorials on Adafruit. There's just a ton of them. I have almost 100 tutorials at this point. So please do check them out if you get a chance. It's uh, learn.adafruit.com slash users slash firepixie and you can see all the different tutorials that I've written. 
the very last thing I'll talk about is this gorgeous piece behind me right here. <laughs> so um, this, is, uh, this is my newest, latest, greatest thing. I'm making these paper crafted crystals, the same as I, you saw in the chandelier. Um, and they're just made from laminated cellophane wrap. They look like this when they come out of the vinyl cutter. And then I've been folding them like a maniac because I'm stuck inside and I can't go to any events. Uh, and it's really been very zen. It's been wonderful. Um, I counted and I think there are about 550 crystals in this one panel, which has just taken me months to make. And uh, I want to make 12 of these panels if possible. Um, and I'm planning to make an entire crystal cave that I can go in underneath my house and uh, that's, that's the project I'm working on right now. Um, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go over to the chat and take a look and see if, uh, if I have any questions we can ask. So um, Natasha wants to know how I got started writing tutorials for Adafruit. Uh, basically, I, I lived down the street from Phil Burgess, who is one of the geniuses there at Adafruit, and I had posted online um, asking for help with, I think, a mermaid project that I had years and years ago, so we were on each other's radar. And as soon as I started asking for help in the Adafruit forums, we connected with each other, and he helped me a lot building Mermaid Glimmer uh, with some of the early work that I was doing. And, uh, and then as soon as uh, I started doing that, he had me come on the Adafruit show and tell. So Adafruit has a, uh, has a show and tell every Wednesday afternoon. And if you come in and you have a project you want to show off, that's like a lot of fun to go in there and show everybody. And once I kind of got up uh, with the Adafruit crew, then it was kind of a hop, step, and a jump from there to starting to write tutorials. Um, I was doing it anyway, so they just uh, it, it was just a great fit. So I'm really lucky that I got to do that. Uh, let's see. Here's another question. Uh, thanks for your talk and sharing. My question is regarding the intersection between arts and makers. Do you think that every maker is, by definition, an artist? If not, how would it differ? Is it mainly about the final goal or the process? Um, makers versus artists, I think it's just a state of mind. Uh, I think that I've seen people that can make a cement step into your house and that can be art or it can not be art. It just depends on where it's coming from inside of you and also whether you just feel brave enough. I think uh, it was a long time before I was able to call myself an artist. I was a performer for a long time, but becoming an artist, like that's a big step. It's a big title. You gotta, you gotta feel it inside of yourself. And um, I just feel like it's, it's very much it's very much a confidence thing. It's very much, uh, I, don't, I don't know. That's, it's a hard question to answer. But I, I think that all of us have an inner artist, and it's, it's just finding that. Being inspired as well. Like if I can bring art to enough little kids who can see, you know, oh my gosh, this is possible, or, you know, get them excited in science, then I feel like I'm really um, touching the artists within them too. I think art and science are really next door neighbors. Um, magic and science as well. That's my favorite thing about science is that it is magic. If you don't know how it works, then, uh, then it's magic. <laughs> um, someone else asks, what do you do for light diffusion? Uh, there's a, a thousand different things. Um, and pretty much that is where the art lies is finding different ways to diffuse the light. So back here, I've got the NeoPixels. Some are facing forward, some are facing back. And the ones that are facing back show a more diffused light. And the ones that are facing forward are the ones you can see a little bit more clearly. So it's just playing. There's so many different, uh, so many different ways to diffuse lights. And that's what makes them so much fun to play with. Let's see. I'll just do a couple more. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone's asking about code. And um, I have a couple of different languages, I guess, that I code in. The easiest one to start with is called MakeCode. And it is uh, Microsoft online, it's just free. You just go to the website and type in makecode.com. And you can drag and drop blocks of code onto your microcontroller. So you don't actually ever have to write a single line of code. It's really easy to do. Not as versatile as some of the other languages. 
Um, my second favorite is probably Arduino. Um, Arduino was my first language that I got started in, and there's just so many people out there writing libraries and code samples, that sort of thing, so it's real easy to go online and find examples. And then the newest language that I've been learning is called CircuitPython. And this is kind of starting to replace Arduino a little bit. A lot of the newer boards are really focused on CircuitPython, and it has a lot of really cool features as well and works very well with a lot of Adafruit's boards. So um, if you're interested in getting started, I definitely recommend starting with MakeCode um, and then exploring the other two as you need more uh, options and things. Let's see. Uh, any other questions? I'm looking to see what else we have here. Everyone is a maker, that's true. Um, and uh, someone's asked about my necklace, so I'll talk about this for just a second. Um, this is one of my necklaces right here. I do have a lot of necklace tutorials on the Adafruit website as well, and I do have a tutorial for this one. This one is a uh, waterproof, because of course I needed a necklace for Mermaid Glimmer, and the setting is 3D printed. It has a uh, tilt sensor inside, and then the whole entire Necklace and electronics is, uh, is encased in resin, and that's how I got it to be waterproof. So I can twist it, and then the necklace turns off. The on-off switch is just hooked up to a tilt sensor. So uh, when it's upright, the necklace comes on, and when it's upside down, it goes off. Um, and then it charges with an induction coil, so like your electric toothbrush, it sits on a little uh, dock. That, that charges itself. So um, this one is really fun. I love making necklaces. It's a challenge to try and get the electronics as small as possible. Um, and it's getting easier and easier because they're coming out with smaller boards and skinnier pixels and all that sort of thing. So I'll probably revisit some necklaces pretty soon. Uh, let's see, waterproofing. A couple of people have asked about uh, how to waterproof. Well, this is one way, obviously, is to encase it in resin. But that's not going to work so well with a larger project. Um, with Mermaid Glimmer, what I did was I got an OtterBox. So it's uh, rated IP68, four IP68. Um, it's rated down to 100 meters underwater. And then I got a uh, Navy SEAL rated cable gland, and I drilled it through so that the um, the wires could go through the box because any air in there will completely just force its way out. It was tricky. Um, all the LEDs that I used on Mermaid Glimmer, at least in Rev1, I did individually encase those in resin as well, the same way I did this necklace. Um, but that was kind of a nightmare, and when they break, there's no way to fix them. So um, NeoPixel dots uh, are, have come out recently, and I've gotten Adafruit to start carrying those. And they are waterproof already, and they're already encased in resin, and they're fantastic. So take a look for those uh, NeoPixel dots. They come in like a strand of two inches or four inches. I have some of them back here as well. And they're probably my favorite LEDs to use for costumes or cosplay-related apps because they're just impossible to break. All right, well, we have just a couple more minutes here. I just want to look at everybody. Wow, thank you guys all so much for coming. Um, it's so good to see all your faces and waving at me. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed this. So please check out my tutorials at Adafruit if you're interested in doing this, or you know, send me a message on Twitter or my email or anything like that. Um, I'd love to connect with all you guys and become more a part of the community. And I'm really hoping that in the future, we'll be able to actually do this in person and get together and uh, share our creations. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.